Thank you, Handbell Choir. Am I on? Let's see. Yes, I am. Good morning. Welcome to Springfield First United Methodist Church. I'm Jason, one of the pastors here. It's good to see all of you here. We're getting it right. It's good to see everyone here today. Welcome those watching by Facebook. It's a chilly day out there. It actually feels like winter, so we're excited about that, aren't we? <laughs> uh, we're glad you've chosen to join us for worship, and we're excited um, for what the Lord has planned for us today and in the days ahead. And we'd like to welcome any guests that are here and visitors. We're excited you're here. You'll see the attendance pads. Please fill those out. And also, in the midst of that, if you'd like to join us for the Wednesday night meal, that's a perfect opportunity to reserve your, your meal. Uh, so with that said, let's continue with some announcements. If you look at the back of the bulletin, you'll see some uh, brochures around the sanctuary here in the front and in the back in the side area here. Those are related to 2020 youth stock. And uh, Joseph Nicholson has asked me to, to mention that. And, and there's plenty around in the church, even some down by the Moore Center. Yes, sir. Thank you, Joseph. And continuing with our announcements, we'll be brief. There is a church council meeting Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, in the Jim Porter classroom at 6 p.m. Please attend if that pertains to you. Also, the church office is closed tomorrow for the holiday. And you can see the Wednesday Night Together program for the next five weeks will be Ken Allen's study of the book Irresistible Faith. And there are some sign-up sheets out in the gathering areas if you would like a book. Um, you do not have to have a book for this first session, but the books are $10. And if you'll jot down that you would like one, we'll get one ordered for you. You need to do that today, uh, preferably if you can. Also on the inside cover of your bulletin, you'll see the chancel flowers are in memory of Rachel Farmer and Lee Montgomery, given by Jerry and Martha Farmer. And then Christian sympathy for the, the Russell family, Clinton, Julie Russell, Jessica Jones, Brad and Mary Jane Russell and family in the sudden passing of their brother and son, Jake Russell, on Monday. Um, he's at Robertson County Funeral Home. There will be a memorial service tomorrow at noon. Visitation is 2 to 7 this evening and 10 until the time of service. Please be in prayer for that family and all of those listed in your bulletin and those in your hearts. With that said, let us continue our worship.
Would you remain standing as we share in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, found on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We've come to the prayer time, one of the prayer times in our service. And you'll see that there's silent prayer that we begin with. So we're going to have some music playing softly. And this is your opportunity to pray silently. And then I will offer a pastoral prayer and we will join together with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, we've come to you again. We are before you. Lord, we come humble. We come in anticipation of what you want to reveal to us today. We are a thankful people and a grateful people. Lord, on this day, we pray that you would, that you would bless us, that you would bless our lives that you would pour into the hurt and the things that need healing that you would that you would pour into us your healing mercies your assurance that you are near in the good times in the not so good times Lord we lift up today the knowledge in our spirit that you love us Lord, we pray that, that those listening to this prayer, that those who are joining together all over this country and this world in worship would be united in the fact of knowing that you've made us, you've redeemed us by the blood of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, you call unto us assuring us of life eternal found in Christ safe and secure ours for the taking Lord we accept it Lord we are undeserving but by your great love and mercy we thank you we pray this day for our worship service for those who serve for those who sing play instruments for those who preach your word, for those who make sure we have sound and lighting and audiovisual equipment, for those that protect the facility. Lord, we pray that this day would be all about you, that we would remember your goodness. Lord, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite Billy Paul Carneal and the children to come forward for children's chat. Good morning. Let's do it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. What do you think about this old cold weather we've had lately? Isn't it kind of bad? We've had rain and now we've got, but the sun's shining today, right? It never snows. <laughs> but good news. It hadn't snowed, but you got a holiday tomorrow. Remember from school? So that does help, even though it's not for that. We're honoring uh, the late Mark Luther King. But nevertheless, you all have got through Christmas, and you're excited now. You've, you've all, done all that you wanted to do with that, and you've probably gotten tired of playing with some of the toys and all. So let's think today about Jesus and his disciples. Do you know what his disciples did? Oakley, do you know what they did? You want me to help you with that one? You want me to help you with that one? They did help to do his work. You know, one person can only do so much, so Jesus had his disciples. And they helped spread the good news of Jesus wherever they went, Right? Okay, so who does that kind of thing today? God does it. How does he do it? He does it through what today? His magic. All right. And we have the Holy Spirit today to help us do that kind of work, right? And even though you're not adults yet, you can be disciples yourselves to those that you come in contact with. Did you know that? Did you know that? Can, there are people who look up to you. You may have some friends, somebody in your classroom that's maybe a little shy and not too outgoing, and you can be a friend of theirs, and you can talk to them and make their lives better. And you know, Think of in your lifetime now, when you feel like you need help and you need encouragement, who's out there to kind of, that you can turn to? Turn to God, all right. How do we do that? Through what? Prayer. Prayer, that is right. You have Sunday school teachers that lead you. You have... You have, who others beside that? You have teachers at school. You have other adults. You may have a grandparent. Oh. We, um, there are bigger kids that can help us. That's exactly right. And as you continue to grow, you'll be one of those bigger teachers. So what I want you to remember today is, that though Jesus left us and went to heaven, his work is still being carried on. And while you're not big enough to do what you will ultimately be able to do, you can already be a good influence on people. And I want you to remember that and remember that through prayer and setting a good example, you all can really be Jesus' disciples. Now pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for our blessings. 
and help us to be your disciples today. All right. Amen. All right. You all did super well today. Take care. to call to be God's voice on earth, as Billy Paul said. We're here to witness. Jerry will talk about that in his sermon today. We're the hands and feet. We're the voice of God sometimes to a world in need. Let's stand together as we sing hymn number 380. There's within my heart a melody.
Thank you. You may be seated. I'd like to call the ushers forward at this time where we continue our worship with our tithe and offering. Let us pray. Again, we come to you, Lord, grateful. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for these people that have gathered here. Lord, bless these offerings that we give. Offerings, Lord, that are given out of love and out of our deep commitment for you. Lord, take them and bless them. We pray and we know in faith that wonderful things will happen because of them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
You may be seated. Last week we spoke about the baptism of Jesus and we talked about the significance of that. And we talked about how our response to what Jesus has done for us should be a response of gratitude and love, should be a response of faithfulness and an opportunity for us each day to live our lives as God's people. Every day we are reminded that every day we should ask God to wash us by His grace and fill us by His Spirit and renew our lives so that we can fulfill the total purpose of what it means to be a child of God. So last week we talked about remembering our baptism and how we respond to that. This week we're going to be sharing in the testimony. You'll see scripture for today is John chapter 1, verse 29 through 42. If you'd like to join me in your pew Bible or maybe your Bible app or just want to listen along <coughs> as I read John chapter 1, verse 29 through 42. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with them, with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, was one of the two that had heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. But you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we look at this scripture, we can say that over and over again in that time frame, John was sharing the message of Christ. And he was making sure that individuals knew that he was not the Messiah. He was saying over and over again that he was simply a voice to be heard. And he was pointing people to the Messiah. He was pointing people to Jesus. And when he encountered the Pharisees, they were questioning him. And those who were very interested in what he might be doing or the one that would come would ask who this Messiah was going to be and John's response was always he's the one who is so great that I don't even have the ability to untie his sandals I can't even get down on the ground and loosen his sandals that's how wonderful and powerful he will be he said I've come to baptize you for the remission of sin, he has come to give you the Spirit and to baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. As we see this story unfolding, we see Jesus coming to John 
and John declaring, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We see John offering this testimony of what God would do in Christ Jesus. He said he wants to be a witness to the people, John does. He says, I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. This is the one that you should be following. This is the Messiah. He offers testimony. As John shares this, his disciples begin to think that they should follow Jesus. They should share in that ministry. So they follow Jesus down the street. They have an encounter, and Jesus tells them to come and see what will happen. I always love the part of the story that John declares. It's not in the other Gospels, but what John declares where Andrew, the younger brother of Simon Peter, goes and testifies to his older brother about Jesus. You don't see Simon, you don't see, excuse me, you don't see Andrew doing very much. You see him doing this. He's the one later on that finds the little boy with the lunch pail with the fish and the bread in it. But he's always introducing people to Jesus. That's what he did during his lifetime, quietly and unassumingly introducing people to Jesus. But I think it's really powerful when you think about little brother Andrew going and finding his brother Simon and saying, we have found the Messiah. You have got to come and meet this guy. You need him in your life. And it says he takes him to Jesus. And as Jesus and Simon interact, Jesus proclaims to Simon that he would be Peter. Now in the other Gospels and other places, we see that unfolding even more, that he would be the rock on which they would build the church. So you see Andrew doing his part to provide testimony for his brother Peter. And the rest is history. Throughout the scriptures, testimony is spoken of. You can look in multiple places and you can see where God encourages others to share their story. As you look in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, <coughs> you see the testimony where there has been an individual who has been demon-possessed that Jesus cast the demons out of, and he says to go and tell others. Go home and tell how much God has done for you. Now this is the story where Jesus cast out the demons, and this is the story where you hear the demons say, I am legion. And the demons are cast out of this man, and he goes and he shares what Jesus has done. He offers testimony of a changed life. In the book of Acts in chapter 4, individuals who had been touched by Jesus continued to testify to the resurrection of Jesus and God's grace was so powerful in work within them that the people around them had no need. I think that's powerful, folks. Think about that. That the testimony of Jesus was so powerful that there was no one in the community that had a need. Wouldn't that be wonderful today? Praise God if we had that in Robertson County, Springfield. That the testimony of Jesus Christ will be so powerful that the people of the community would not be afraid to testify, but would share the love of Jesus Christ to the point that there wouldn't be a need in the community. That everyone would be fed, everyone would be sheltered, everyone would be cared for. What a wonderful opportunity and what a big task that we have in our lives. But the testimony of Christ Jesus is in our hearts, and we can share that each and every day. The early church was empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we are empowered as well to give testimony of how wonderful God is in our lives. 
As we look at the book of Galatians, Paul says himself, and maybe you have been like Paul, where you have said, I have been crucified with Christ, his testimony. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What a testimony that he said, I am no longer me. I have surrendered my life to Jesus. And the only way that I'm surviving is because Jesus is living in me and flowing in and through me. Paul's faith in Christ is his testimony. And then we discover in the book of Revelation, it talks about how those saints, those that had been attacked by the evil one, those who had fought against the evil one, had testimony because they had won because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I don't know if you've ever seen individuals or been in prayer circles, but I've been in prayer circles where those words have come out, where we have prayed and we've realized that there is good and evil in the world. And we've given testimony that by the blood of Christ and by the testimony of the saints and those who live now, we can overcome the evil as it attacks. So let us remember that testimony is so important in our lives. There is power in the testimony. Our testimony may just change someone else that we encounter. I want you to think for just a moment can you think of someone that provided testimony for you? Someone that lived out their faith before you. Maybe a Sunday school teacher, maybe your grandma, maybe your family member, maybe someone else that you encountered over time. I want you to take about 10 seconds and I want you to think about that person. Someone that offered testimony to your life that brought you closer to God. Ten seconds. Did that person come to mind? This requires a congregational response. Did that person come to mind? Yes. yes. Well, as I was contemplating that, I had several that ran through my mind. But as I shared this morning, there were a couple individuals that have provided testimony that have really touched my life. <clears throat> I think about my dad, Joe Wallace. He was a medical doctor for 54 years and practiced in Sweetwater, Tennessee and in Crossville, Tennessee. And he was the type of individuals that he would, uh, individual, that when he entered a room he had a presence you ever seen individuals like that they just had a presence and it was a loving caring presence and he would love on everybody he would talk to everybody and he would share his faith with different individuals that he would encounter and as he got older and he began to decline he asked me to speak at his his funeral. I'm not sure how many of you have spoke at your own parents' funeral. It's not always an easy thing, but it's a privilege. And he said, son, I want you to tell them something. He said that I want you to tell them that your daddy was not a perfect man. And he would say, and then tell them that Jesus was his Lord, that he lived for Jesus. And although he wasn't perfect, he tried real hard. So many times since my father's death in 2016, I've had individuals contact me. I've had individuals send me letters that says, your daddy, if it hadn't been for your daddy... 
I wouldn't be here. And they talked about his faith, and they talked about his witness. I think about another guy that was a member of my last church, and every Thanksgiving he would come up to me and he'd say, now I don't have my doctorate, but he called me Doc. He'd say, Doc, I got to testify. And I'd say, okay, testify. <laughs> and he would get up in front of the church once a year. He's an African-American gentleman that had, had a, lot of in, a lot of trouble in his life, had been in jail, had been out of jail, did a lot of ministry while he was incarcerated. But he would get up on the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and he would share about how God had really blessed him. And then he would almost come off the floor and he would say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we'd all go. <laughs> but it was a powerful testimony. It was almost a lifting off the floor. And it just filled people with a sense of excitement and love that this guy had a testimony. He had a checkered past. He'd done different things that society said was wrong. But in spite of all that, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think about an experience that my mother had in her, her life. Early on in, in my, early on in my life, my mother had some health issues, and she, she struggled with a drug addiction. And she says, honey, if it'll help them, you tell them. And she was in a treatment center years ago, and I was little. And she said that just about every night through the treatment process that she would wake up during the night and she sweated through her gown and her sheets would be wet because she'd break out and sweat during the night in the process of trying to get through the withdrawals. And she said she woke up one night and she said, God, or she, she was getting ready to go to bed, excuse me, and she said, God, please let me sleep tonight. Just once, every night, I wake up with my gown wet and my sheets wet. Can I please just sleep? The next morning, she woke up. Her bed was dry. Her clothes were dry. And there was a sun beam coming across her bed. She jumped out of bed, and she went to the window and opened the window, and she heard the birds singing. And she said she hadn't heard the birds sing in years. And from that moment, she had no other desire to use the drugs, and she knew God had touched her life. Forty-four years later, she still gives testimony to God's grace. Traveled all over the southeast, giving her testimony saying, if it hadn't been for God, I wouldn't be here. You see, testimony is personal. It comes from the innermost part of our lives, our souls, where God has, has changed our lives forever, where God has forgiven us, where God has spoke to our hearts, and we are to give testimony of what God has done. Paul says that we should do that, that we should live like Christ. We find that in John, we also discover in John the Baptist that he says, I've got to decrease so Christ can increase. I've got to get out of the way so Jesus can be the center of it all. You see, we are called to give testimony now someone will say, I don't have one. Well, has God been good to you? Then you have a testimony. Amen. You have a story to tell. You see, testimony grows out of personal experience. And we have the opportunity each day to give testimony right where we are. And God gives us the privilege as well to go elsewhere and share. We are called to be ready in season and out of season. We are called to be ready at all times 
to share testimony of God's grace. I've had opportunities where I've shared my faith and I wasn't going to a place to share my faith. I was going somewhere to a meeting one time and I got on an elevator and a lady said, are you a preacher? And I said, um, yeah. And I was thinking, was there this big plaque on my forehead that said preacher? And she said, I've got a lot going on in my life. And you are a preacher, right? Yeah. Would you pray with me before we get up to our floor on the elevator? So we prayed together. And what a rich experience. You never know. And there's something about the love and grace of God that will be in your life that it will show. Maybe that's what the woman saw. But if we're being faithful to Christ, if the Spirit is empowering our lives, people are going to see it oozing out of you and want to be a part of it. So I encourage you wholeheartedly to not be afraid to give the testimony of God's grace. Examples from music that you hear on the radio these days, there's a song called Believer by Rhett Walker that says, I walk a bit different now, now that my heart's been found. <coughs> nothing really feels the same. I hold my head a bit higher. I lift my voice a bit louder. Something inside has changed. I'm a mountain mover, a water walker, more than just an overcomer because I've been set free. I'm a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier, because I've been redeemed. I'm a believer. And then Zach Williams says, There I was empty-handed, <coughs> crying out from the pit of my despair. There you were in the shadows holding out your hand. You met me there. And now where would I be without you? Where would I be, Jesus? You were the voice in the desert calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You're my rescue story. Lifting me up from the ashes, carried my soul from death to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You're my rescue story. And then our very own Fanny Crosby put it this way as we sung today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We have been called by God to seek to live well, to laugh often, and to love extravagantly. We have been called to live well where we seek to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. We have been called to laugh often where we seek out relationships where we have an opportunity to give testimony to each other in our community of faith and where we have the opportunity to take that testimony beyond the walls of the church and love extravagantly to touch people's lives and to remind them that God is very real. Your testimony may just change a life if you're willing to share it. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I say these things in the name of the Christ. Amen. As we sing our final song of the morning, the altar rail is open. If you have any special need for prayer, you may want to come and thank God for those who have provided testimony in your life. There may be an opportunity where God is leading you to share with others as well. So we're here to pray with you. If you have a desire to accept Christ as your Savior, would you come? If you have a desire to want to 
join this church, would you come as we sing together our final song, Softly and Tenderly, page 348 in your Methodist hymnal. It's always my prayer that you have encountered the Lord God Almighty. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, seeking to live well, to laugh often, and to love extravagantly, doing it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.